How long should I keep my backups? Hi everyone, I'm Leo Notenboom for AskLeo.com where I've been talking about backups since 2003. It certainly seems that way. It is one of my more popular topics. I do tend to keep harping on it. Um, I'm kind of always a little bit concerned that maybe I talk about it too much, but when it comes to backing up, it's really hard not to uh, want to talk about it a lot because it is so important. It can save you from so many different things um, and so many people don't do it. So this question actually comes from a pretty cool place and I'll say why that is in a minute. Whenever I back up my computer, how long should I keep my backups? I have some from years ago and I want to delete them. <laughs> the good place, <laughs> yay, you're doing backups. Yay, I really, I'm always, very pleased when I hear people uh, that are actually doing backups and that they're doing them regularly. Uh, every once in a while, I hear stories from them that uh, the backup saved them in some way. And that's very, very encouraging for me to hear since, as I said, I do talk about backing up so much. How long should you keep them? Well, I don't think that there's a single answer to this question. It really does depend a lot on what your own needs are, what your own expectations are, what your own plans are, um, how you use your computer and so forth. But I do want to go over some of the things to at least think about when you want to decide how long to keep those backups. So here's a real short answer. If you just don't want to go any further, do this. Do monthly full backups perform daily incremental backups, and then keep the backups for three months. That's a simple answer that actually will probably serve about 80% of the average consumer just fine. Uh, backups generally are things that you want available soon, right? You end up with uh, a malware infection and you want to revert to yesterday's backup. Well, you only need yesterday's backup. Um, or you deleted a file and you don't realize it for a couple of weeks. Well, you want to be able to have a couple of weeks ago. Three months is perhaps overkill, but it's a nice compromise between keeping things for a really long time and keeping things long enough for the kinds of common scenarios that I've just described uh, to actually be served by your backups. So if you do nothing else, consider doing that kind of a backup strategy, monthly full, uh, weekly, or I'm sorry, daily incrementals, and then keep everything for three months. Let things roll off the end after three months and you should be fine. Many backup programs will actually allow you to configure exactly that retention for you and then just handle it all uh, automatically. So as I touched on, there are some implications of how long you keep your backups. And it's important to understand exactly what backups are. For example, the backup you took yesterday is an image of your backup as it was in, in time yesterday. It's a snapshot of your machine in time yesterday. The backup that you took the day before that, it's a snapshot of the machine as it was on that day. The day before that, another snapshot of the machine as it was on that day and so on. You can keep going back and back and back depending on how long you keep your backups and what backup strategy you happen to be using. But the idea is what you have is a snapshot of the machine as it was on a particular day. So what does that mean for certain types of problems? Malware. I talked about this a moment ago. If you end up with malware on your machine, a backup is an awesome way to revert the machine, revert your machine to what it was before the malware ever arrived. It's like the most convenient way to completely remove any malware that you might get. Just roll back the clock, take that machine back to a time when the malware hadn't yet arrived, and then of course, don't do whatever it was that caused that malware to arrive in the first place. Of course, we've all deleted things that we didn't intend to delete. It happens. Sometimes the uh, recycle bin is your savior. Sometimes you've emptied the recycle bin. Sometimes you're deleting using a technique that doesn't involve the recycle bin. In either case, at some point you realize, oh dear, that file's gone. I deleted it. As long as you remember in time, where in time means as long as you remember within however long you're keeping your backups, you can get the file back. If I deleted a file two months ago, I know where it is, I know what the file name was, 
then I can go back to the backup of two months ago and recover just that file without needing to restore the entire machine. Again, it's a wonderful safety net against all sorts of mistakes, including our own. A similar scenario is what I call file corruption. Stuff happens, it just does. Files can get corrupted, hardware can fail, uh, software can run amok. I mean, it just, it does happen. Files can be damaged. Once again, as soon as you notice, as long as you notice within that window of however long you're keeping your backups, you can simply go back to the previous version of that file before the corruption, before the damage, before the whatever. Uh, that allows you to then recover that file, restore that file, and carry on with your work as if nothing had ever happened. Now, one of the things we do talk about often are hardware failures, but those usually are kind of instant, right? You know that it happened right then and right there. So typically you end up going to your most recent backup. As long as you have a recent backup within a day or two or a week or whatever, then you can restore. It's just not an issue. The length of time you keep your backups rarely impacts your ability to recover from a hardware failure simply because you know the failure happens so quickly. The kinds of things we're really protecting ourselves from are the things you might not notice for a little while. It's that little while that really does need to be defined and then a safety net put in place that allows you to feel comfortable that you will always discover whatever it is you're trying to recover from within that amount of time. That's why I go with three months. It seems excessive and it probably is, but it's a great, great safety net. So we've talked about safety net backups for that kind of stuff. Regular backups in many ways are at least the beginnings of our safety net backups. They are the backups that we are doing regularly automatically without having to think about it. In my case, that means I'm doing monthly full backups. I'm doing daily incremental backups. I'm keeping my monthly full backups usually for a little bit longer than three months. I've never actually had to go back longer than three months, but it's because I've got the disk space, there's simply no harm in keeping it. And then the other thing that I do is I then go into what I'll call the archive backups backups that you're keeping for some reason other than safety, maybe for historical or what if kinds of scenarios. What I do is I actually take a backup of my machine on the first of every year and then I save that backup pretty much forever. Granted, pretty much forever. Usually, there's usually a fall off where I say, you know what? It's been five years. It's been 10 years. I don't need that backup anymore. But Realistically, what I think of when I create that backup image is that it's something I plan to keep forever, where of course forever isn't really for all time. It's for a really, really long period of time. That's just me. I mean, those are the kinds of decisions, the kinds of thinking that goes into deciding how many backups to keep and how long to keep them. The rule of thumb might be, will I or anyone need anything from this backup ever again? And if so, how long might that happen? Then keep your backups a while longer. Like I said, most of the times you're gonna want something within a day or a week or two of taking the backup. That's why I say keep it a while longer, two months, three months, something like that. So how long should you keep your backups? Well, hopefully I've given you a lot to chew on, a lot to think about, a lot to make some decisions based on. But the kinds of things you should be asking yourself are, how confident am I? that while discover a problem quickly within a certain amount of time. What would be the cost, be it money or psychological or any other kind of cost associated with it of trying to recreate whatever it was that might have been lost? That factors in at times rather than keeping something for a really long period of time, it might be cheaper or the cost might be low enough that you could say, you know what, if anything ever really does happen, I'll just recreate that, whatever that might be. And finally, is there any reason you just can't throw more disk space at the problem? This is one of the, the, the great benefits, if you will, of the way that disk space seems to be getting both larger and cheaper at the same time. It's amazing the amount of space we can now attach to our computers here at home or use online. Sometimes the best answer to this question is not to answer it. How long do I keep my backups? I don't wanna think about that. I'll just get a bigger external hard drive 
and keep adding to the collection. Yep, someday you might need to weed through it. But you know what? It might even be easier someday because you'll realize that that backup from two or three or five years ago, no, you're never going to need that and you can start freeing up some space. By then you may even have a better idea of exactly what your backup needs and time frames are going to be. Hope that helps. Uh, for the article that this was all based on that actually goes into this in a little bit more detail and for updates, related links and so on, visit askleo.com 23473. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.